O'Donnell from Texas Alliance for Life opposes the advocacy and practice of abortion because they are committed to protecting the fundamental right to life of all innocent human beings from the moment of conception until natural death. They believe that abortion is the termination of a human life and therefore view it as morally wrong. The question of whether abortion is murder is a complex and highly debated topic. Different people and organizations uh, hold varying views as the matter. Those which consider abortion to be murder often believe that the beginning at the conception and the terminating of pregnancy is equivalent to taking the life of an innocent human being. On the other hand, proponents of abortion rights argue that women should have the autonomy to make decisions about their own bodies and reproductive health. They may contend that a fetus does not possess the same uh, moral status as a fully developed human being and that a woman's right to choose should be respected. It is important to note that the question of whether abortion is murder is a subjective and value uh, taken issue. It depends on one's belief about when life begins. The moral status of fetus and the rights and autonomy of the pregnant woman. Unfortunately, ultimately, the abortion debate encompasses a wide range of ethical, religious and legal perspectives. Different individuals and organizations approach the topic from diverse angles, making it a highly contentious and emotionally charged subject. We have Amy O'Donnell from Texas Alliance for Life to discuss this today with us. Thank you so much, Amy O'Donnell, for joining me today. She's Director of Communications for Texas Alliance for Life. Thank you, Amy, once again for joining me for, for a healthier discussion in my show. Thank you for having me. Okay, so my first question is like your organization is obviously for pro-life. So how are mm -hmm. you educating the communities? Yeah, so one of Texas Alliance for Life's goals is to educate people across the state of Texas about the vast resources that Texas offers women and families. That okay. education goal is one of the three main ways that we work in Texas. One focus is education, one is outre outreach, where we actually partner with the organizations mm -hmm. that we help to educate people on. And then of course we work legislatively as well, keeping our pro-life laws intact and advocating for more protections of life in the state of Texas. Now, as far as education goes, we educate through social media, we educate through our website, we educate through various things that we write, as well as interviews that we do with the media, not only across Texas, but across the United States and across the globe as well, when we have opportunities. And we talk about the fact that Texas does offer vast resources for women and families facing planned or unplanned pregnancies. One such resource is our Alternatives to Abortion program, which is funded at $100 million for the biennium for this last two-year budget. And now the legislature is meeting and looking to increase that allotment, though that final amount is not determined yet. And those funds go to pregnancy centers, maternity homes, and adoption agencies who support women through pregnancy and in the case of pregnancy centers and some maternity homes after birth as well. Pregnancy centers, in fact, support families up to three years after the child's birth in very tangible ways, not just through donations such as car seats and strollers, diapers, wipes, formula, but also with rental assistance or car payment assistance in some situations, as well as helping people to obtain the job skills that they need to provide for their families, helping them to find government support resources in the case of low income insurance and more. And so we know our pregnancy centers in urban and rural communities really walk out pregnancy supporting women and their children after birth and before. Okay, my question would be like there is a huge outcry in, in, in the entire country about after the overturn of Roe v. Wade thing. So where do we stand with that? I mean, there is a large population 
who's against it and they feel like it should be a more of a choice matter. What do you have to say with that? It's important to note when the Supreme Court overturned Roe in the Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization case, they determined that the power to legislate life returned to the people and their elected representatives. Yeah. So what that means is that wherever we fall as voters, we have the opportunity to voice our opinions through our vote. And in Texas, we know that while people may fall on both sides of the issue, where we are in our state right now shows us that we have more pro-life voters than we have pro-choice voters or pro-abortion mm -hmm. voters because we have more legislators and statewide elected officials who support the protection of life than those who do not. And that is where we fall in Texas. And that is because of the voices of the people who elect their representatives. But Amy, there are like even today when we are recording this show that they in, it's all over the media, like there are still eight women. They have moved forward uh, against Texas over abortion bans and claims that their life were at risk. So people still feel like women still feel like they're their life is at risk, that there are doctors, they still feel like it's more of a liberty, you know, it's more of a like they want to feel free and they feel like with the abortion ban in place within our state, they don't, they do not feel the factor of freedom. I think it's great if you want to feel free to exercise that freedom before you choose to engage in the act of sex without protection or precaution or recognizing that to engage in the act of sex, there is always the potential outcome of a baby being formed. Yeah. Once a child is formed from conception, it is a separate life worthy of protection with unique DNA, unique fingerprints. So exercise the freedom before you choose to engage in the act that creates a child. Once a child is conceived, that baby has a right to life and that baby is worthy of protection and no one's freedom ever should allow them to take the life of another person. Freedom when it goes too far, freedom when it dehumanizes a group of people based upon where they are in the womb, that is that is not okay. And so we just recognize that life has to be protected from conception on. You wanna exercise freedom, do it before you engage in that act. Okay, what about if in state of Texas, if we can just, because there is also an argument from a certain group, they feel like, what if we just increase the time limit, you know, because there is in, in Texas state, the, according to the SB8 bill, that there are certain period of weeks, if that can be increased, don't you think that would be safe enough for a lot of women? Again, we are where we are in Texas because we have more pro-life voters who have voted in pro-life legislators and statewide leaders who have moved passage of pro-life laws such as the Human Life Protection Act, which Texas Alliance for Life advocated for to protect life from conception on. This is the will of the voters and the will of the majority of the people in our state. Studies and polls show that the vast number of voters on both sides, Democrat and Republican, support protections of life at some level. When we look at the progression of people, we recognize that even where we sit today, we are continuing to age. We are continuing to move into different seasons and stages of our life. That's a natural progression of life. Yeah. You look at life beginning at conception to birth, to afterbirth, to toddler, to preschooler, schooler, you know, whatever graduate moving on into adulthood, at any point in there, that is that same person formed at conception worthy of protection. There is no stage of life that we should determine it's okay to end the life of another simply where they are in that stage of progression. I I would say that you're right over there, like life, the value of life is so important because um, I also, happen to know a lot of couples who have been trying to have a child mm -hmm. and this is this is all in the hand of the God like you can have the child whenever it's decided or it's in your destiny and on the other hand that there are people who does not want to have kids and they have to go through the certain procedure but what about the lower income bracket women I mean let's face it our society has certain issues there are drug abuse uh there are abusive relationships and and they just probably i know they they are with their husbands they but they are not at that stage 
to support a pregnancy. I know we are having this discussion, you have your own valid points, but there are certain situations when they feel that they cannot move forward with it. How, how about for those people and their freedom? I would say that taking the life of another is not the answer to getting out of poverty. And we need to recognize that for people of low income, our state does support those families, not only through the alternatives to abortion program, but also the Medicaid program and the Texas, Texas Healthy Women's Program, which provides true care for women as far as their reproductive needs go, contraceptives, breast exams, uh, MRIs, you know, just the, and not MRIs, um, breast exams. Oh, what is the name of the machine? It's totally escaping me right now. But you know what I'm saying. So that program takes care of the health and reproductive needs of women, uh, including contraceptives, but not providing abortion care. The Medicaid program takes care of covering the cost of childbirth and takes care of the child even after birth for up to a year. And then the pregnancy centers across the state helps provide for very tangible needs. And so mm -hmm. if somebody is in a poverty position in a low income situation in the state of Texas, Texas has vast resources to help them choose life and raise their children and walk that out with them in a way that um, they can they can feel good about that doesn't perpetuate any trauma or take any lives in the process. I mean, what about like there are a lot of women right now if they if they need abortion, like I said, maybe they are not being irresponsible, but there is a certain situation of a medical condition and they have to they need an abortion and they have to travel out of state. Don't you think it's bringing a lot of negative uh, attention to our state? We actually have very sound laws when it comes to our medical emergency exception. The language that we have in our laws right now with the Human Life Protection Act is the same language that passed in 2013 in the Prenatal Protection Act. Mm -hmm. Doctors operating in the state of Texas have been operating under that medical emergency exception language for 10 years. It's not new language. It's not new territory. Now the landscape has slightly changed in that now life is protected from conception on. And so clarification does need to come to doctors where there is confusion about the clearness of our laws and the yes. exceptions within our laws. But that needs to come from the Texas Medical Board mm -hmm. and the agencies that do provide that clarification for doctors when legislation affects their practice. But that being said, the stories that we're hearing where doctors are saying they can't intervene until a woman is septic, that's not what our laws say. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's simply just not the case. And so we do encourage those agencies that provide clarification to doctors to do so, so that doctors have no confusion about the clarity of our laws. Okay, and it's um, unfortunate that women are receiving sub-adequate care in the midst of doctors or hospital lawyers not fully understanding the scope of the law. Okay, I, uh, Amy, I, I got to take a break over here. We are going to take a short break. And once we will be back, we are going to talk about Texas SB 8 bill so we can talk about how clear it is for the doctors and for the community. Stay tuned. Sure. Thank you. Upgrade your luxury for just $1 down. Get summer ready in style at Big Star Cadillac. Step up to the new 2023 CT4 Luxury for just $3.79 a month. Or the new 2023 CT5 Luxury for only $4.99 a month. Both for 39 month lease with just $1 down. Or purchase either and enjoy $750 bonus cash. Gulf Freeway, just two minutes south of the Beltway. Shop smarter when you shop at Big Star. Shop BigStarCadillac.com. Hey! Okay. If you love me enough to tolerate my perfect little pets and all their glorious dander, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. Hey Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. 
Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back. We're in conversation with Amy, uh, Amy O'Donnell with us. Uh, and she is, we are talking about, she is the director of communications from Texas Alliance of Life and she's all for pro-life. Amy, thank you once again for uh, joining me. I'm, I was, before the break, we were talking about how clear the Texas abortion bill is uh, to the people and the doctors because um, I'm going to come in the second phase about the relationship between the patient and the doctors. It's affecting mm -hmm. that as well. So can you tell us more, like, do you think, like, who should, because you were mentioning something like Texas uh, Physician Association should come forward and talk more, because I think, like, doctors are scared to even talk about it. Well, the Texas Medical Board and the various agencies that govern doctors in the state of Texas or nurses or pharmacies mm -hmm, have a responsibility mm -hmm. to provide clarification when any legislation moves forward and passes that affects their practice so that they do have a firm understanding of how they can operate the reasonable medical judgment and provide the standard of care within Texas's pro-life laws in this situation. So uh, our hope is that the Texas Medical Board will do that to clear up any confusion that there might be but the laws are clear and the language within the laws are clear. So there is no problem there that needs to be fixed. It's just simply a need for that clarification to come forth. Because there, there is this law which has created a civil penalty as well for $10,000 for anyone performing an abortion after a fetal heartbeat is detected. So um, because there is then it came forward and it was clear like there is no criminal penalty but it allows any private citizens to sue for ten thousand dollars i mean this is kind of scary it is bringing bad attention to the state of texas texas alliance for life had as our top priority in the last legislative session the human life protection act which is also known as a trigger bill that mm -hmm. bill is actually the law in the state of texas that is now protecting life from conception on, and it closed the gap that was left open from the Heartbeat Act because that allowed abortions to happen up to the point of a heartbeat being detected, which is roughly about 15% of the abortions that take place. And so while we are grateful for every life saved after the passage of the Heartbeat Act, and we celebrate every life saved, that was not one of our top priority bills we instead advocated for the trigger bill, the Human Life Protection Act, which has criminal penalties, which also allows a doctor to lose their license if they perform an abortion illegally. There's a mandatory revocation of their medical license and the attorney general to provide a steep fine. And so that approach is slightly different. There are three mechanisms there to hold doctors accountable when they do perform an abortion illegally. And so that was our top priority. That's what was my point was, because then that, don't you think that that affects a patient doctor relationship as well? Because doctors must be reluctant to even give the clear diagnosis to certain situations and to certain patients. It's important to recognize when an obstetrician is treating a pregnant woman, that that obstetrician truly has two patients, the mother and the unborn child. And so we need to recognize that there are two patients involved, there are two people involved there, and two people who need care and protection. But then, there, Amy, there is a law, like when you're in an airline and if the plane is crashing, you're supposed to put the mask first and then you're supposed to take care of the child next mm -hmm. to you. So don't you think it, the same rules should apply to humans in real life as well? Like they, I understand there is a, there is a system in place obviously the state also supported uh, the mothers with the kids and all that and the federal system also supports it but but then there is always there is always a little tiny window somewhere where people feel like our freedom has been violated it's heartbreaking to see those situations where yes. somebody receives a fetal disability diagnosis yes. or 
is facing a life-threatening emergency condition stemming from the pregnancy yes, that yes. could take their life or could cause substantial bodily impairment. And in those situations, we do have a clear exception in our law that allows a doctor to intervene, operate under their operate their reasonable medical judgment, provide the proper standard of care. And in so doing, they don't have to wait until a situation reaches the point that a woman is septic or that threat to her life is imminent. Our laws allow them to intervene and operate their reasonable medical judgment as soon as a condition poses a threat to the life of the mother or risk of substantial impairment of a major bodily function. And the goal in that is not to take the life of the child, but to protect the life of the mother. Texas Alliance for Life does support that exception. That's the only exception that we support. And any laws that we've advocated for have had that exception in it. And so in that situation where a pregnancy poses a risk, a substantial risk to the life of the mother, then we do believe that a doctor does need to intervene to save the mother's life, even if it means that that baby will not make it. And within those laws, that means an ectopic pregnancy is a situation where a doctor can intervene. Our laws are very clear that an ectopic pregnancy is not considered an abortion. Mm -hmm. If a woman uh, faces some other life-threatening condition, a doctor so can also intervene. It's been clearly explained in the law, it you has. think? It is very clear in the law. And we hear of these cases where doctors are unclear on the law and the language within a law that uh, in, within our laws that allows them to operate their reasonable medical judgment and we're seeing these cases now come forth in texas where they're not intervening until a woman is septic they're not intervening until uh, she's in the icu with some critical condition and we really really strongly believe that the agencies that govern the practice of medicine in the state of texas need to provide clarification so that women are not being harmed um, beyond uh, what is necessary because our, our laws do allow doctors to intervene sooner. I mean, yeah, because there is a, like I said, so you think like there is such a huge cry because to be really honest, mm -hmm. uh, as a resident of Texas and in love with the state of Texas, like I feel bad. I feel like everywhere I, I go, people just pointed, pointed at us. Oh, so you're from that state. Oh, so you are from that state. They ban it. So it's kind of, it, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel good because obviously I understand there is a certain uh, certain group of people they they want to practice that and then there is a certain group of people who don't want to practice it mm -hmm. so we are just so divided at the moment we are just so divided in everything if you really look at politics as well so there is no discussion there is no common ground over here so you think ever there will be any common ground achieved over here i think it's important to remember that we can be civil and we can be kind even if we do not agree. Yeah. We may not find common ground on the life issue. Our goal is to advocate for life and to help people understand that life begins at conception, that life is worthy of protection, Definitely. that we very much value the laws in our state that protect life from conception on. We're not gonna deviate from that and we're not going to shift from that position. And we do hope through having just dialogue with people that we can help them to shift from theirs and you know honestly that's probably the goal of both sides but yeah. regardless of where we land and regardless of whether or not we will move on our position we do need to be civil we do need to be kind and we can we can do that in our conversation i mean yeah th this is uh, this is just such a uh, such a difficult uh, situation right. because it changes from person to person even as pregnancy as moms we we know like even from one pregnancy to another pro pregnancy it's just different it's maybe the experiences were different and maybe this time the next time it's the experience is different and right. and it's just so difficult and i feel like it is it is such a huge responsibility to be a woman and it's not that easy it's it's there is no breezy drive over here right. uh, being a mom being a sister being a partner uh, you you name it it's it's it mm. takes struggle it's out there but i i just still feel like we can i hope we can find something 
uh, for the sake of our people, for the sake of our community to reach a common ground somewhere. So it's a lot easier because uh, for an example, there have been a lot of Planned Parenthood uh, clinics. They have been under attack as well. And people, it's this is a social media age. It's just so easy to accuse each other for mm -hmm. something which was not never there and to create a mis, uh, misconception. Would you agree with that? There are actually a huge number of pregnancy centers and churches across the country that have also been attacked, have been vandalized, have had yes. graffiti written yes. on their walls. And we're not seeing a lot of, account of accountability there yeah. for the people who are performing those acts. And so that's never the answer. Vandalism is never the answer. You know, anything like that On is just sides. not the answer. Yeah. And, um, and as far as the abortion clinics across the state of Texas, many of them have lost or, or uh, well, they can't perform abortions in the state yeah. of Texas anymore. Yeah. And so we're seeing them close. And so there's no real clinics to attack here, but um, because we don't have abortions happening in the state of Texas, but pregnancy centers and churches also do not deserve those attacks. Yeah. yeah. What, what my last question would be like, there are rape cases as well among victims. So, I mean, is there any clearance for them? Like they just probably don't want to go ahead with it because there are other victims. Rape is a horrific act. And when a child is conceived in rape, there are two victims. There is the innocent woman and there is the innocent child. And both need support. And that mother needs support in choosing life and in determining whether she would like to raise the child or place the child in a loving home for adoption. But taking the life of the unborn child for the father's crime does not reduce the trauma for the mother. It compounds that trauma, it adds trauma to trauma. And where her heart needs to heal from the rape, then her heart would also further need to heal from taking the life conceived in that rape. Whereas giving birth to that child is the best outcome for both the mother and of course the unborn child. We had a speaker come to speak at one of our events in January, the Texas Rally for Life. And he said, I am the 1% used to justify 100% of all abortions. He was conceived in rape. His mother chose the brave option of adoption. He was adopted into a home with 15 kids. Now he and his wife have two biological children. They have adopted two children. And his life's work is to speak out, to let people know that even children conceived in rape have immense worth and no one determines the con uh, no one determines the consequences or the uh, circumstances yeah. behind their conception yeah. and uh, you know we didn't have a say in ours a uh, child conceived in rape doesn't have a say in theirs but regardless we all have the same worth and value thank you so much amy for joining me for the discussion i'll be inviting you again for further more discussions thank you, thank you. Thank thank you. So i enjoy talking to you thank you thank so you. much thank you bye bye, bye. Many individuals aim to support women's rights while acknowledging that there are instances where the practice of abortion can be seen as excessive or controversial. It is and it is crucial to acknowledge and identify this common ground if we are to achieve tangible uh, advancements in the areas of women's health and the well-being of children. The heart of the abortion debate is often resolve, revolves around the question of whether a fetus should be considered a biological life or a life with legal and moral rights, essentially a person. This distinction plays a significant role in the partisan uh, polarization surrounding the issue in the debate. The disagreement arises from differ differing perspectives on whether abortion is the act of taking a human life or the termination of a potential life that possesses a threat to another person. These contrasting views often contribute to the uh, intense debate and strong emotions surrounding the topic. Recognizing this uh, fundamental division and understanding the underlying concerns and beliefs can pave the way to meaningful dialogue and potential avenues for compromise. By finding common ground and 
fostering respectful discussion is important because and it is possible to work towards solutions that address diverse perspective while also uh, prioritizing the health and rights of women and children. It is important to approach the complex issue with empathy and respect to the wide range of viewpoints and experiences that individuals hold. Only through open and constructive conversations, we hope to bridge the gap and find ways to promote the well-being of individuals involved in the abortion debate. Thank you for watching Truth Be Told with me, Sophia Jamal.